Hey friends, my name is Mike, I'm a comic book colorist, and welcome to part 8 of my guide of comic book styles of coloring, which is something we don't often talk about, and we have arrived at the decorated, the illustrious, the incomparable, the iconic Frank Miller. Now Frank Miller is not a colorist, but when you think of Frank Miller's work, a very specific thing pops in your head. And it isn't just because of Sin City. I, we'd like to think that this whole white on black thing came from Sin City. I think a lot of people think that, but you can go back to his earliest days. He has used a tremendous amount of negative space, and he's sort of created lines with white and shadows with black. And you can, you know, his most famous early, well, not early work, but his most iconic work is probably The Dark Knight returns and we're going to look at some of that and how that's related to what I've done here with Spider-Man. And I didn't want to color this live because it it only takes a couple minutes and because I was working with with inks and I really I needed to look at reference and kind of figure out what what was going on in his silhouettes. So we have Spider-Man here and I'll just show you what I did. I didn't do I didn't do a whole lot. Uh, because we already had inks, so obviously I I had holds, so you can see here, those are the color holds, where I have, let me zoom this in just a little bit, and then this is what I drew on, those are the original inks, and you can see that I, I just slopped them up a bit, and since the light is coming from the left side, there's a lot more white over here and I didn't want to go in there and have to redraw the whole thing because this kind of creates the effect and it's it's exactly what I wanted this was the first thing that I saw when I was taking apart this image and trying to figure out a style for for all of them and I still don't have a style for everyone there are certainly more than 17 styles of of comic book coloring but the the silhouette is an iconic Frank Miller thing but Miller's work in general doesn't it doesn't look like this and he's got he's had a vast array of of colorists work with him i believe he was married to lynn varley who did the the dark knight uh, the dark knight returns which wasn't i mean it wasn't written as a graphic novel it was four comic books and i remember the, they were some of the the first comic books i can ever remember having my hands on i was born in 81 and I remember the dark, having the Dark Knight Falls book because it wasn't it wasn't one series called The Dark Knight Returns. Each each book had its own title, and this particular page was super important. It was you know in this page it's where the lightning bolt is going through Superman here, and his body is just you know sucked up and emaciated, and it goes from purple to pink, and that pink is in the cape here. And the reason that I have a digital these are scans of. A scan of Frank Miller's original pencils and if you look here like the first thing that you're going to notice is there's not a lot like there's a lot more detail in the comic book uh, Klaus who uh, Klaus Jansen who, who inked this had a lot of work to do his pencils are incredibly sloppy I mean in a good way this is this is very memorable and I, I think that if the story wasn't so great the art would be, you know, would really be seen. And people have trashed this art before, uh, certainly. There's been a lot, I mean, for, for everyone that, that loves The Dark Knight Returns like I do, there's someone else who can who could tell you that this is sophomoric and, and kitschy and bad, and there's anatomy issues and form issues, and there really are. If you have, and, and, that was, and that was with the inks. They're not looking at the pencils. The pencils are way worse. Uh, I don't want to say worse, but it, it just it does exactly what it's supposed to. So this is why I didn't choose, my point in going into this is that this is sort of the iconic Miller thing, what you think of, these silhouettes, but most of his work is based on, on his artwork that he, you know, he, he's penciled a lot of the stuff that he's written. And this is so, you know, you're hardly inking here. You're more correcting. And I've had, I've been working, and I probably scribbled at this for like 30 minutes, even though it's just a few lines because I can't figure out how to get the wiggle in my line. And I've, I haven't been drawing that long. And, you know, my, my lines are, he's just got all this jagged stuff in there that you really have to, 
you, I mean, this is all on purpose. This is exactly what he was attending to. This isn't, you, you can't do this as a professional artist on accident. Um, he, he could surely, unless he has Parkinson's or something, uh, there's just no way to get that much wiggle in your lines. You have to kind of like, you know, go really slow and jerk your pencil around. It's just really, it's, it's super interesting to look at these because I was thinking about, well, maybe I shouldn't do a silhouette. Maybe I should do some other, you know, something else in his catalog. And since he, you know, most of his work isn't, isn't just black and white. So, uh, I would, I would encourage you guys to go look at the Wolverine book, go look at the, the early daredevil stuff that he did and just, and just see, uh, especially the early stuff. It's, it's super interesting to look at things that were colored traditionally. And another reason that I wanted to, I want to ink this out is that I'm working on some I'm making a brush set to have available to you guys with traditional elements with a, a grainy sort of airbrush and uh, markers, uh, Copic markers and, and other marker styles, a CTEC pen, um, all sorts of stuff. And I want to, I want to be able to cover this page and prove that, Hey man, these brushes can do cool stuff. And then I also want to cover this page with like, look what I can do now. Look what I can do with digital. Cause I, I really think that I can, I can improve on the original. Because they just didn't have, they didn't have a computer. I mean, I don't know how hard it was to make that lightning bolt that he didn't draw here, and it looks it looks really cool. But like, you know, I can do something way cooler. So, just all this is just exercises to get better. But that's my thinking and rationale here to uh, to making Spider Man look like this. And in a way, it does do Frank Miller a disservice to all the great work that he has done. But in another way, this is what he's known for. So I'm going to stick that in the middle of the image. And it really, like, this is going to be the first thing that your eye is drawn to because there's there's no greater contrast than black and white. You're going to look here, and it's Spider-Man. He has the most, I mean, all of these characters have iconic shapes, but there's a reason Spider-Man's been around and is as popular as, well, I have a lot of theories about that. I also have a theory about his origin. He has one of the most emotionally complex and best origin stories. If you remember... When he finds out his powers, and the first, I haven't seen the recent Spider-Man movies, the reboots, the ones with Emma Stone, but the uh, the guy who's friends with Leonardo DiCaprio, what's that guy's name? Toby. To it's not Topher Grace. Uh, I can't think of his name. But the first, like, modern computerized Spider-Man movies. And the ones with James Franco. That guy. They got his origin story right. He does go into the ring and he tries to make money and he passes over that the thief who the the thief that eventually is the one who kills his uncle. So he's using his powers for bad. It's it's, it's he's, he just says it. it's very layered and it's simple and it's nuanced. And I think he's got one of the best and purest origin stories and believable origin stories. Uh, even the radioactive spider. I mean, it is superheroes. Suspend some some disbelief, but. So yeah, so that this is part eight. That's it. I just wanted to talk a little bit about about Frank Miller and what you can learn. One more thing: this silhouetting thing. Uh, I've been watching videos since I'm learning to draw. Uh, I've been watching, I've been paying close attention to Jonathan Rector, and he's making a web comic called Jessup King, which I don't know that much about the story, but I just love his arts. His art style and my art style are very different. He's doing this very cartoony, super. Uh, saturated fun beautiful fantasy world and it's super fun to to watch that guy draw because I, and i've learned a lot and he and I, I think i've i mainly started watching him because of manga studio because i wanted to learn how to make to to uh, use manga studio so i figured i'd watch someone who's you know kind of doing a little bit of everything he's coloring he's doing you know he's kind of like me in the sense that he he isn't just just doing one thing and he uh he turned me on to the the animation i've looked into this beyond that but the sort of an uh, uh, the the silhouetting technique here where you're just drawing blobs and then maybe you give them a little bit of form and shape he takes this to the 10th degree and really creates a 3d 3d cylinder he, he uh what am i trying to say he gives them an entire 3D skeleton with solid shapes. There's a simple word for doing that. I don't know what it is. Probably because I'm dumb. So, uh, yeah, I've been doing this every day where I just make some 
I make some shapes to try and build some characters for the comic. Well, it's a comic that I've written, and I, I want to try and draw it myself before I give it to anyone else to draw. And I've got all these specific characters in mind, so I'm just drawing shapes. We have, and and the the cool thing about this technique, it's kind of reverse engineering a a Frank Miller because all the Frank Miller silhouettes start with drawings. They start with pencil drawings, and then they're inked. And this is kind of taking the silhouette, taking the cloud, if you will, and then building it into something. And and so I'm looking at it from both perspectives. You know, from the these are the comic books that I like. How how did they do this? And then also animators do this or uh, character designers or whomever to speed up the process they create these these blob cloud shapes and then they kind of etch in the details and it's it's super effective um, it's it's certainly something that i would uh i would recommend everyone try and you can start what i would do is i would start by just looking at these big you know the frank millerian <laughs> miller is that a word it is now take some of these and just and just draw the blob yourself and then etch out the details and see uh, see how see what forms you can create and and then you can kind of go from there especially if you don't if you're just a colorist and you don't necessarily draw that much it's still uh, a, a really cool exercise to start to see through an object and see an object in terms of 3d even when it's just a flat blob of color and, and and that's you know that's also what makes these millery millery I don't know what word I want to use there it makes those things so interesting because there there's so much left to your imagination and yet they're so thick I mean the you could say a lot about the work of Frank Miller and you could say a lot about whoops you could say a lot about these uh, these pencils I mean some of them don't make sense they're very scribbly they're they appear to be rushed in spots but you know what you can't say they're not flat it looks like a three-dimensional object and that's all that matters the level of detail the line quality people get so obsessed with line quality like let's look, look i'm going to be completely completely honest with you all right people I, i've had people ask me this i can make a line like that the first time i ever picked up a pen okay Either your hand does it or it doesn't, I believe. Maybe Frank Miller can't do this, but you know what? He doesn't need to. I mean, just because I can do this doesn't make me good at drawing. Because I can create, you know, really nice, even hatches. And I can, I can make them whatever length that I want. So what? What does that make me good at? Eyebrows? Like, this is a... The, people obsess way too much over the smoothness of their lines. It doesn't... It's not going to help you draw. You don't need to be able to, this, this is proof, all right? This is the most popular graphic novel of all time, and it has the line qualities of a six-year-old, right? Line quality. Now, the depth and the storytelling are off the charts, so think about that. All right, I'm going to stop. I could just sit here and just ramble about comic books all day long. I'll shut up. This, I wanted this video to be like three minutes. It's 13, so uh, we'll be back with part nine uh, later today or tomorrow. And we're going to do... I need to get magic out of the way. This chick, this uh, sword-wielding sorceress with no clothes that I've complained about, ad nauseum. And we're going to do her... I want to do her in like a video game like like with textures and... Like I want to make a Final Fantasy VII character out of her because I just I just I just hate her and I was worried that I was going to have to make this sword glow. So what if I turn the sword into metal, and then what if this was like blue flame or orange flame or something, and then we just I'm, I, if, I, if I just don't make her magic, if I make her some other character that's an invention of my own, and then I don't have to worry about the light being everywhere, and maybe she'll make more. If it's not magic, she'll make more sense because this is it's just. Never mind. We'll, we'll, I'll complain about it when we get to it. But uh, kind of a Final Fantasy VII design. We still need to do Thor. Thor, we're throwing every painting technique in the world at him to just do something awesome. Uh, Psylocke, we're going to do traditional grab and grab. But I'm going to make her like, like I'm going to make her outfit kind of plasticky, and it's going to have a zillion colors, and she's going to look amazing in purple and orange and yellow, and she's going to be really cool. Uh, 
Ultron, we're going to do Metal, I do believe. Wolverine, I'm not, I'm kind of up in the air on. This, this isn't like a cool pose. Like, since they're all just kind of standing around, they're not doing anything dynamic, it's, I tend to, if we look at the, the things that we've, we've done, they're, they're pretty understated. I mean, for, for the Avengers. Maybe not for any comic book, but. Uh, yeah, so that's where we're at. And now we're at 15 minutes. I'm going to shut up. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part nine. It'll be here soon. Oh, don't forget, like, subscribe. Uh, if you have a comment, you want to see it, since there are some up in the air, you want to see a certain comic book style, or you have a question about a technique or anything that you want me to do, just put it in the comments. Say, hey, could you make a video about blah, 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 Photoshop, Manga Studio, Illustrator, whatever. I've been doing this crap a long time. So hopefully I can help you out. If not, maybe I can point you in the right direction. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.